Today's video is brought to you by Raycon and their premium wireless earbuds. Raycons come in a variety of colours and the new everyday earbuds offer an improved rubber oil look and feel with optimised gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. Raycons offer 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life as the earbud holder acts as a charging capsule. There's also a built in microphone and you can take calls on the go at the press of a button. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands and Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. There are a great variety of military history audio books that these would be perfect for, such as my book 1000 Miles to Freedom. Relax and listen with your premium wireless Raycon earbuds. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash felton to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Raycon earbuds, get yours today. The United States military is unusual in that it issues a medal to service personnel who are killed or wounded while serving. And it's a tradition with a long history going back to the Republic's very beginnings. The Purple Heart carries the profile of General George Washington, America's first president. Though the Purple Heart was created in 1932, backdated to US involvement in World War I from 1917 onwards, its ancestry can be traced to the Badge of Military Merit, America's first military decoration, created in 1782. It took the form of a purple heart-shaped cloth badge sewn onto Continental soldiers' uniforms during the War of Independence against the British, and it was itself inspired by the French Army's Medal of the Two Swords, a badge of merit created in 1771 for award to non-officers. Hence the profile of George Washington on the modern Purple Heart, creating a link with this earlier award. The idea of resurrecting a badge of military merit came about in 1927, when General Charles Summerall, Army Chief of Staff, sent a draft bill to Congress. It was unsuccessful, but the Army held on to the idea. In 1931, new Army Chief of Staff General Douglas MacArthur, who will feature prominently in the Purple Heart story later, began secret design of the medal, created by Army heraldic specialist Elizabeth Will. It was eventually accepted for award and given to all soldiers who, from 1917 onwards, had been awarded meritorious service citation certificates, army wound ribbons or wound chevrons. MacArthur presented the first awards himself, and America also has MacArthur to thank for the Purple Hearts handed out today as they were all manufactured to support an operation for which MacArthur would command. Later, living veterans of earlier wars such as the Civil War, the Indian Wars, the Spanish-American War and the China Relief Expedition could apply for the award of a Purple Hut if they had been wounded. Down the decades, various amendments to the award have been made since 1932, expanding how and when a Purple Heart may be awarded. World War II saw the mass manufacture of Purple Hearts to keep pace with real and projected casualties. Some 1,506,000 Purple Hearts were made in 1941 to 1945, the greatest number towards the end of the war. Why? Well, because of one specific operation, the projected invasion of Japan. In order to end World War II following Germany's defeat in May 1945, he was seen as necessary to physically invade the Japanese home islands. General MacArthur's advance and that of Admiral Nimitz both brought US and Allied forces to a position from which an invasion of the Japanese island of Kyushu was feasible. At the time, it was the only way Japan could be defeated. Though her cities and towns had been bombed and burned to ruins, and she faced starvation due to an Allied naval blockade, Japan showed no interest in surrendering. Her armies had doggedly resisted and fought to the death on many Pacific islands and through the jungles of Southeast Asia. She remained in control of vast swathes of China and also Malaya, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, parts of Burma, Korea and not to mention the Dutch East Indies and French Indochina. The plan was a two-part attack. 
Operation Olympic was scheduled for November 1945, with U.S. and Allied forces landing in southern Kyushu to use it as a staging base for the main invasion, Operation Coronet, in early 1946. The Allied landings in the Kanto Plain, near Tokyo, on the island of Honshu. Collectively, the two operations were codenamed Downfall. It would have dwarfed all other amphibious invasions in history. The problem was the Japanese tenacious and suicidal resistance. The nation was prepared to make a last stand on Kyushu. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers, backed up by thousands of kamikaze planes and suicide boats. If the recent US landings and battles for Okinawa and Iwo Jima had shown one thing, it was that the casualties for downfall would be horrific. The US government predicted casualties of 863,000 up to early 1947, including 267,000 dead. Such casualty figures for an operation to defeat a nation that was already in every sense of the word defeated, a bomb-ravaged wasteland with little industry left and the population starving, was unacceptable to the United States. Once the atomic bomb became viable, it was, of course, obvious to President Truman that using it to force the Japanese to surrender was much preferable to a bloodbath of astronomical proportions on Kyushu, not to mention the millions of Japanese soldiers and civilians who would also have perished in another year or more of war. However, before the atomic bomb was released for use, the government manufactured hundreds of thousands of Purple Hearts, ready for the massive US casualty figures their own projections told them would occur if they invaded mainland Japan. With the surrender of Japan in August 1945, following the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the surprise Soviet invasion of Manchuria and Korea, the US had too many Purple Hearts. In fact, the government had some half a million in storage. So what happened to all these World War II manufactured Purple Hearts? They were issued for the new conflicts America found itself in during the Cold War, firstly Korea, and then Vietnam, and later Grenada and Panama. By the year 2000, the stock of World War II manufactured Purple Hearts had still not been used up. In fact, the Department of Defense still had 120,000 medals in storage. They had been stockpiled in Army, Navy, and Air Force military supply depots all over the world. Next came America's modern conflicts in Iraq, twice, and Afghanistan. It is extraordinary to note that veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan, awarded Purple Hearts, received medals manufactured in World War II for their grandfathers and great-grandfathers' generations, making the Purple Heart probably the last World War II manufactured medal still being awarded today each medal being a genuine antique. The US still has about 70,000 or more of these World War II made Purple Hearts ready to be awarded, a rather depressing statistic when you think about what they represent. Incredibly, in 1999, the Defense Supply Center Philadelphia ordered 9,000 brand new Purple Hearts, the first made since 1945. Why? Well, nearly all the old Purple Hearts have been transferred to the branches of the armed forces, stockpiled in military supply depots all over the world, leaving the government storage empty. It was a bureaucratic decision to restock at government level. However, the medals currently being issued are all World War II vintage, so it's entirely conceivable that US service personnel will still be receiving World War II made medals for war wounds many decades to come. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.